Hello again. Less than a month ago, on July the 20th, a new record was set for the number of illegal immigrants crossing the English Channel in a single day, when 430 were recorded as arriving in England over a 24-hour period. We gasped at such a large number, rather naively in retrospect, but a couple of days ago, 592 landed in a single day. That was the Thursday just gone. Because these people are no longer arriving in little rowing boats or on lilos and so on, but rather in marine craft capable of carrying 40 or 50 at a time, we can expect this number to rise dramatically until we are perhaps seeing a thousand a day coming to England illegally. Now, because the British government is apparently unable or unwilling to take any firm action, those living in England will have to live with the consequences of this invasion. I say invasion, it's ironic that a couple of generations ago we were able to prevent an invasion of the country by the armed forces of Nazi Germany and now seem unable to prevent some inflatable boats from reaching our shores. What are the consequences of allowing all these people to flock to England? Well, I mean, we all know about the difficulty finding doctors and dentists and about the fact that um, the casualty departments in hospitals are now full of foreigners who are seeking medical treatment because they're unable to register with a doctor because they're here illegally. There's a lot of difficulties like that. I want to think of one particular aspect today, though. One very obvious and noticeable result is in the appearance of cities, especially London and its suburbs. Most illegal immigrants want to live in London because that's where the people who speak their language usually live already. The thumbnail to this video shows the Sharif Towers in the East London suburb of Ilford, which are a Pakistani development housing many of the foreigners who now live in the district. Stratford in East London is the same, with tower blocks shooting up on every available patch of land. It is purely and simply a matter of numbers and of making a few very basic calculations with those numbers. What puzzles me immensely is that we never read about these obvious calculations in the newspapers or hear them spoken aloud on television or radio. If I can do a few sums of this sort, I'm sure there must be plenty of people in university and government offices who can do the same. They never announce the results of their calculations, though. Let me try and express the matter in an easily visualised way. I'm sure we all remember the fire in the Grenfell Tower block a few years ago. This gives us a handy visual aid to think of in terms of size. Just try and picture for a moment the tower at Grenfell, the tower block that caught fire. OK, it was 24 storeys high and it had more than 20 flats in each storey. Yeah, right, that meant nobody knew exactly. It had roughly five or six hundred people living in it. Now, just think about that. Picture it in your mind's eye for a moment, the Tower at Grenfell. OK, to house the illegal immigrants currently crossing the Channel and coming to live in South East England, we will need to build a block of flats the size of Grenfell Tower every single day for the foreseeable future. It is really as simple as that. That's why we're seeing all the new high-rise buildings going up. They are needed to house foreigners who have come to the country illegally. It is why the green belt is being concreted over, because that too will be needed to house the hundreds who simply turn up uninvited on our doorstep each day. I seem to remember a quotation about this, uh, somebody over 50 years ago saying, we must be mad, literally mad, 